Okay, good morning. We're just gonna give everyone a, a few uh, minute, a few seconds more to log in and then we'll get started. Hey, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Wendy Stark. I am the Director of Business Retention and Expansion for Invest Windsor Essex. Uh, I know everyone is here this morning to learn about the Electric Vehicle Manufacturing Value Chain Program recent, recently launched by NGEN and to see how the program can assist your company. Uh, but I first wanted to give you a brief overview of Invest Windsor Essex as we're hosting the webinar this morning. Uh, Invest Windsor Essex is the lead economic development organization for the Windsor Essex County region. We are a private nonprofit corporation funded primarily by the city of Windsor and County of Essex. Our focus is to develop and execute strategies to retain, expand, attract, and help start up new businesses in the Windsor Essex region. IWE has several departments. Business retention and expansion team works with existing local businesses to support their growth and success by providing them with the information they need, helping them navigate various government departments and regulations, connecting them with supply chain opportunities, and advising them on the various government programs that can support their businesses. One of these programs is the one we will hear about today, NGEN's EV Manufacturing Value Chain Program. IWE's other departments are our Small Business and Entrepreneurship Center, Marketing Communications, our Automobility and Innovation Team, and the Investment Attraction Team. Since we have some, invest, uh, some participants from outside the region, I wanted to mention that our investment attraction team of Joe Gonsalves and Nachu are available to assist national, national and international companies with locating in the Windsor-Essex region. They particularly worked very hard to attract the Stellantis LG battery plant to the region. Among their many services, they provide clients with information and data on the region, offer site selection services, connect clients with potential local suppliers and service providers, and provide information on various government support programs, such as the one we'll hear about today. Other support programs at the local level that the IA team assists with include community improvement plans in some of our municipalities, which support companies' new construction or facility expansions by refunding to them the municipal portion of the increase in property tax triggered by the construction project. I also wanted to share a bit more about our automobility and innovation team, which is unique to our organization. Windsor Essex has long been known as the automotive capital of Canada, but this team is leading the region's transition to the automobility capital of Canada. As one of seven regional technology demonstration sites in Ontario, the Automobility and Innovation Centre can provide companies with, an, companies with an Ontario presence and access to free services under their simulation software, digital twin, and cybersecurity programs. Companies can stack these services in conjunction with the NGEN program funding. For more information on these services, please connect with my colleagues, Mackenzie Habash or Kasim Nizam. Contact information for all team members is available on our website, www.investwindsoressex.com. Please feel free to reach out to any of us. Uh, before we start our main presentation, I want to let everyone know uh, that we will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. Please put your questions in the Q&A box and we will go through them at the end. Only the presenters will be able to see the questions. I also wanted to let you know that we will be recording this session and we will share the recording with all registrants in case ever, anyone is not able to stay for the full presentation. So now I would like to introduce today's principal speaker, Arthur Kong. Arthur is the Director of Project Manage, or sorry, Project Development at Next Generation Manufacturing Canada, also known as NGEN, Canada's Advanced Manufacturing Supercluster. Building on his years of experience, innovation, science, and industrial policy, Arthur works with companies and ecosystem partners to build advanced manufacturing, funding challenges, and collaborations across key sectors like automotive, aerospace, mining and metallurgy, and food processing. He graduated from the London School of Economics and Political Science with a Master of Public Administration degree in Public and Economic Policy. Arthur brings a diverse and complementary set of skills and experiences. As an international development practitioner, Arthur worked with the Asian Development Bank and has also led economic and value chain development projects for Engineers Without Borders Canada in Zambia, Malawi, and Liberia. He is also a licensed professional engineer. Arthur, over to you. 
Hello, good morning, everybody. Bright and early. Thank you for joining us today. Let me share my screen while I pull that up. Perfect. And let me put that in full screen mode. Can everyone see my screen? I don't know, Wendy. Do you see? Do you see the the screen? We don't see it yet. Sorry. One second. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Excellent. Put that on screen mode. Presentation. There we go. For the, uh, Perfect. IT hiccups there. So, uh, good morning, everybody. As uh, thank you for the wonderful introduction, Wendy. My uh, again, my name is Arthur Kong. I'm the director of project development at uh, uh, Next Generation Manufacturing Canada, or Engine Canada for short. Thank you so much for joining us today. And before I begin, I really want to thank, uh, oops, my apologies there. I uh, want to thank uh, uh, and acknowledge our partners at Invest Windsor Essex for making this webinar happen, specifically uh, uh, Wendy Stark, uh, Gina Merritt Ivanko, Matt Johnson, and Stephen McKenzie. Thank you very much. We, we appreciate the, our, our partnership with Invest Windsor Essex. Uh, and I'm going to talk about our newest funding program, the Electric Vehicle Manufacturing Value Chain Program, or EVMP for short. Uh, in, in your journey in exploring opportunities to invest and continue to grow here in Windsor, Essex, NGEN and our EVMP program, as Wendy mentioned, is one of the many tools in the toolbox for you to really take advantage of. So uh, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail uh, throughout the presentation and happy to uh, uh, take questions at the end of the presentation, and feel free to type that in the uh, in the chat box there, the Q and A chat box, and I'm sure we'll be happy to dive into that after the presentation. Uh, for those of you who don't know who we are, Engen is an industry-led not-for-profit entity uh, that's been tasked by the federal government to implement uh, Canada's Advanced Manufacturing Global Innovation Cluster. So you might know. Uh, of our previous uh, government brand uh, program branding as a super cluster program. Um, and Jen, uh, are, as implied in our name, our mandate is to help build and enhance Canada's uh, advanced manufacturing capabilities by uh, supporting the development, commercialization, and scale up of advanced technologies across the many different manufacturing verticals that we have here in Canada, whether that be like automotive, aerospace, bio manufacturing, food and food and drink processing, you name it, right? We work in all of those verticals. And we do so through several different functions. First and foremost, we, we help promote Canadian uh, capabilities here at home and abroad. So in 2025, uh, for example, uh, Canada will be the partner country for at Hanover Messe and Hanover Germany, uh, which is the largest uh, advanced manufacturing uh, uh, conference in the world. So we're really excited for that. So please stay tuned for opportunities to engage in 2025 for Hanover Messe. We'd love to uh, uh, kind of speak and, and dive deeper into that. Uh, we also help build connections. So we act as an ecosystem connector uh, that uh, uh, helps catalyze partnerships and collaborations to develop more innovative uh, advanced manufacturing technologies and capabilities. We also have uh, uh, workforce development and uh, SME man, uh, management capacity building programs. And I'll talk more about that in our later slide, as well as programs and, and, and industry-led committees that help develop tools and resources to help SME manufacturers adopt next generation industry 4.0 technologies to help modernize their operations and help modernize our overall uh, manufacturing footprint here in Canada. And last but not least, right in the middle there, uh, uh, my team uh, at, at NGEN is to help uh, uh, develop uh, uh, collaborative R&D funding opportunities. So we can uh, certainly talk, we'll dive into that right now in this presentation. In 2021, you know, NGEN launched our first electric vehicle manufacturing related program. Uh, it was a huge success. We received over $180 million worth of applications across 80 industry partners. We ended up funding $76 million worth of projects across 34 partners and 15 projects, and seven of which were actually interprovincial collaborations. So, for example, we saw 
collaboration between BC and Quebec, Ontario and Atlantic provinces, you name it, right? We, there was definitely that, that cross-Canada participation. Overall, NGEN, uh, at NGEN, we've cumulative, cumulatively funded over $140 million uh, in EV manufacturing innovation from across 100 industry partners across Canada and across the uh, electric vehicle value chain, all the way from the processing and refining of critical minerals, all the way to battery and vehicle manufacturing. So uh, uh, really exciting projects there. And we, I can certainly share the link that, that talks about the project that we funded uh, two years ago in 2021. With that said, you know, a lot has changed in Canada's uh, automotive industry since our last uh, 2021 funding program. So we've seen, since then, we've seen billions of dollars in, of, in anchor investments being made across Canada, all the way, you know, in both Bay-Cancourt, Quebec, to right here in Windsor-Essex. Uh, most notably, as Wendy mentioned, the, uh, the Stellantis LG Energy Solution Next Star Energy uh, uh, battery plant, right? So that's really exciting. Uh, Federal Industry Minister Francois Philippe Champagne calls these investments a generational opportunity and one of the biggest transformations that we've seen in, in the industrial landscape in modern times. So this is really something that will uh, have economic benefits generations down the line. So I, I think this is something that that's a we're at, at a point where, where there's a lot of uh, uh, exciting things that could happen. So our objective at Engine, sorry, I don't know why these slides are changing there. So our objective at Engine is to really use our funding to complement and support these anchor investments and help build out uh, Canada's electric vehicle uh, value chain with made in Canada manufacturing technologies and capabilities. So this is where we're focused on. And this specific uh, electric vehicle manufacturing value chain program will focus on the scale up and commercialization of transformative, collaborative and business led projects that target the value chains of specifically road based battery electric vehicles and fuel, sane, uh, fuel cell uh, electric vehicles. And I'll talk more about uh, that in the next slide as well. Um, this slide is uh, talking about the five pillars of engine that all engine funded projects need to meet. First and foremost, as implied in our name, uh, all engine projects need to focus on process innovation. So you're either developing an advanced manufacturing technology or a transformative production process. So let's say a new flow sheet or a new formula to produce X, right? And I want to contrast that with product development and product innovation. So we'd certainly focus on the how, not the what. All of our projects also need, are also need to be transformative in nature. So we're looking at uh, uh, projects that are not only transformative here in Canada and North America, but the world, right? So we're looking for intellectual property that will help put Canada on the map and also uh, help Canada leapfrog over other jurisdictions as well. Uh, thirdly, all, all engine projects need to be collaborative in nature. So we're looking for a minimum of uh, participants of at least two Canadian industry partners, one of which needs to be a small medium enterprise or SME with less than 500 employees globally. I'll talk uh, more about this, uh, this pillar in a later slide as well. Um, all projects also need to be applied. And what we mean by that is uh, 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 we're not looking for early stage experimental projects. All projects need to demonstrate a, uh, a short to medium term path to commercialization. So, and, and so essentially a path to market needs to be shown. And so what we're saying is we're looking for market pull projects, not simply technology push projects. And last but not least, that fifth pillar enduring, this is a, 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 for those of you who've applied for any government funding out there, this one's fairly common. All projects need to demonstrate uh, some benefits to the broader Canadian advanced manufacturing ecosystem, whether that be on, uh, on, on environmental, social, and other economic development metrics as well. Uh, as again applied in our in our uh, in our name, uh, uh, you know, we focus on process innovation. So, uh, in terms of eligible project types and eligible EV value chain areas. Uh, as I've mentioned before, we're looking at projects that focus on either the developments of an advanced manufacturing technology, 
a novel manufacturing process or a, a novel circular economy process, uh, like a materials recycling, uh, uh, as, uh, for example. As you know, this is an EV manufacturing program, all projects need to be related or targeted at one of the following uh, eligible areas in the EV value chain. So looking at the processing of critical minerals and materials, uh, looking at the manufacturing of traction batteries and their related components and systems, looking at the uh, uh, manufacturing of fuel cells and their related components and systems, looking at uh, manufacturing power electronics, uh, Look at, and also looking at the uh, manufacturing of electric machines. And what we mean by that is, is the, the uh, electric motors and the gearboxes. And um, last but not least, we're looking at also looking at significant vehicle light weighting. So that the, the light weighting would have to be directly related to the objective of enhancing uh, electric vehicle objectives. And I want to note that the manufacturing scale up of hybrid powertrains are in fact in scope, but only for the electric and or zero emission uh, aspects of the hybrid architecture is in scope. I will go into this slide in detail and read every bullet, but I'll highlight the, uh, the important uh, points for projects that are not in scope. So as a corollary of what I just presented, uh, projects that focus primarily on product development as implied in our, in our, uh, in our, in our pillars would not be in scope. Uh, projects that don't contribute to the development of an electric vehicle value stream. And what, and what I mean by that, let's say your, your project is manufacturing tires, but tires are, you know, meet the general objectives of enhancing automotive in general, but not necessarily an EV value stream in and of itself, right? So there needs to be some form of, of connection to enhancing electric vehicle manufacturing here in Canada. Uh, projects related to off-road vehicles are also out of scope. Uh, for example, if your project is uh, is somehow related to the manufacturing of of recreational vehicles or mining vehicles or ag agric related vehicles, that would not be in scope. So we're certainly looking for projects that are directed at Canada's mainstream light duty and heavy duty vehicle market. Uh, such as uh, the the one here in the 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 vibrant market that we have here in Windsor Essex. Uh, projects related to, to ice based powertrains and ice aspects of hybrid powertrains, as I implied before, as well as uh, EV charging and uh, the manufacturing of EV charging infrastructure is also not in scope, as I had mentioned before, because Canada's bread and butter is on LDV and HDV manufacturing. We're looking for on vehicle innovation. The manufacturing of on vehicle innovation. I want to stress that. And kind of the last one I want to talk about is 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 the the projects related to the extraction of raw ore. So when we're thinking about critical minerals, the mining of those critical minerals in, is not in scope. At NGen, we consider manufacturing as everything downstream from extraction. Um, as I also talked about, projects needing to be collaborative in nature. So. Uh, pro applicants would need to submit their application in the form of a project consortia. So a project consortia needs to meet three kind of key criteria. First and foremost, there needs to be at least two unassociated industry partners involved in the project. So uh, a lead and at least one other partner. Uh, and I wanna kind of define here what we mean by a formal collaborative partner. So uh, in, in, in Engine's case, a formal collaborative partner is somebody who has skin in the game. So uh, an entity who contributes funding or cash to the project and contributes background IP to the project. And they would collaboratively develop new foreground IP and hence will also receive Engine funding. So this is somebody, a formal partner is somebody who will, who, 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 uh, will benefit and contribute to the project. Secondly, uh, there, there needs to be at least one small medium uh, enterprise involved as a partner. So one that's less than 500 employees. Globally. So I want to kind of stress that multinationals are in fact eligible to apply for NGEN funding in this EVFP program. And the third bullet is somewhat of our uh, building on our the, the pillar of, of apply that I talked about earlier. So there needs to be a clear path to commercialization and dem there needs to be some form of demonstration that the of a market pull. Uh, so I so we're looking for uh, the, the
the involvement or support from either an industry-based market pull company, so potentially a downstream customer from, uh, from your company or your consortium, uh, a vehicle manufacturer or a tier one business as well. So uh, what I mean by involvement or support, so that would ideally, one of these three entities would ideally be a formal collaborative partner or would provide the consortia with, with an in-kind support. However, if not a formal partnership nor the provision of in-kind support, we're, we're asking for at a minimum, a strong and credible letter of support demonstrating an agreement to, to commercialize your project outcomes after the project is complete. So, so we're ensuring that, you know, once your project is complete, the, you're ready to help build out Canada's electric vehicle value chains. And so that's essentially uh, why we want this requirement built into the project consortium. So I wanna kind of stress that a formal collaborative partner does not necessarily need to be somebody downstream from you. There can also be partners on board that are lateral kind of technology partners that will help build out your, your advanced manufacturing capabilities as well. So there's many different ways to, to kind of put together a, a project consortium. So happy to chat with you one-on-one -on, -one on what this looks like. Let's dive a little deeper into the, the different uh, terms and requirements. So in terms of who's eligible to apply, mainly we're looking for industry for-profit organizations that are registered within Canada and have value-added presence in Canada. So as long as they have uh, uh, manufacturing or R&D presence beyond just a sales office. So foreign owned companies are eligible to apply as long as the work is being done in Canada at their Canadian, uh, Canadian branch plant. Uh, Not-for-profit entities are, uh, are able to apply except they need to fulfill several key, key criteria that they need to facilitate R&D here in Canada and their funding and revenue need to be primarily from the private sector or the uh, eligible for infant funding, because we don't want to double dip into other entities that are already government funded. Uh, uh, on a similar vein, uh, non-federal crown corps whose funding is derived from commercial activities as well as indigenous organizations. So at NGEN, we work on a reimbursement model. So we're looking for projects with a total project value between one and a half and $8 million. Uh, and we're gonna reimburse eligible expenses up to 37%. So uh, what I mean by eligible expenses is everything from labor. So at NGEN, we consider labor as an eligible expense, not an incline contribution. So for example, uh, companies will submit a claim with their timesheets showing the employees' hours that are, were de dedicated to the project and will reimburse up to 37% of those uh, uh, of those hours at a, at, a, at, a, uh, at a specific rate that's indicated. Uh, Subcontractor costs up to 30% of total project value, capital and equipment up to a specific percentage of total um, project value, material supplies, travel and other costs such as IP related costs are certainly in scope. Uh, and uh, in order to, for the project to remain collaborative in nature, we're showing so of that 37% that you receive from Engine, we're saying that any one partner cannot receive more than 70% of Engine funding. So, so we're just making sure that every partner is contributing to the project and benefiting from Engine as well. Uh, and uh, we also uh, have an admin fee, a small percentage of the total project value, just to keep our lights on at Engine, uh, right? So my salary is paid as well, right? So, um, and last but not least, we do have a, uh, we're, we are providing a fairly healthy timeline for companies to complete the project. So we're providing uh, companies up till the end of the 2027-28 government fiscal year to submit their expenses and, and complete their projects. Uh, and I want to note that our, our uh, program is 100% stackable with other uh, government funding. So uh, kind of if you have another uh, pot of funding from another entity, feel free to consider us uh, uh, to add on top of that right, for, for that specific project. Uh, now let's take a look at the application process and key dates. So the, the two major gateways in the application process I bolded here on the slide here. So first, firstly, applicants have to submit their projects for screening 
by October 11th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Eastern. So I'll go over this on a later slide and what we mean by screening. Once uh, our team assesses the applications to ensure that they are in scope, applicants will gain access to the full application, which is due to us by November 15th at 5 p.m. Eastern. And the full application, I want to stress that is the, where the bulk of the work is, is located. So we want we re highly recommend applicants to submit their projects for screening earlier rather than later. The application portal is actually now open and live and ready to accept applications. So uh, I'll go over in a later slide again as to what the full application is, looks like and what that entails. Once the full application is submitted, it will then be passed on to uh, into the assessment stage where an independent panel of experts will grade and assess each and score each application. If you are so fortunate and the project is successful and recommended for funding, uh, the project will then enter the contracting stage where documents are essentially, uh, uh, sorry, the slide, my mouse is a little bit sensitive, uh, where, where once you're, you'll enter the contracting stage where documents are uh, are brought up to a certain standard and quality and where legally binding documents will also be developed and executed. So for example, we ask for a collaboration agreement be developed and executed between the partner, between all the partners of the consortium. So this will govern, the this document will help govern the, the collaboration. And we also have a, a non-negotiable master project agreement between the consortium and Gen as well. And once the contracting period is complete, projects can commence and start incurring expenses and start the project. So that's an overview of how Engine's uh, process works. Now let's dive a little deeper into, you know, what we ask of you, right? So first, as I mentioned before, the first stage is is to essentially start a project for screening and. Uh, 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 begin uh, your expression of interest. And we will be asking for this project, uh, the screening to be completed by October 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So we're, what we ask for from you is a description of the project proposal, so a thousand word max. We're also asking for contact information from all partners involved, so at least one lead contact and one finance contact per partner. We're also asking for a signed uh, NGEN application agreement by all partners involved. So this is essentially an NDA uh, that will allow NGEN to, to view any confidential or, or sensitive documents that you may send to us. Um, th fourthly, uh, we're also asking for a high-level financial proposal. For, so for each partner, we're asking for a very simple breakdown of the the funding that you're expecting from us, so that 37%, uh, the portion that you're, con you're contributing in cash, so that 63% that's not kind of uh, reimbursed by NGEN, any in-kind contributions and any other government funding as well. So a very simple kind of like a, a summary table. NGEN also at this stage will also commence a financial due diligence or FDD assessment. So NGEN will assess each partner's ability to support their, their stated financial commitment to the project. And so we'll evaluate factors, including but not limited to uh, like profitability, liquidity, and cash flow, and the uh, leverage to indebtedness uh, ratio as well. Again, you know, this is a, 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 an easier step, the screening stage. So we highly recommend applicants to submit their projects for screening early to give sufficient time to complete the full application where a lot of the bulk of the work is, is located. And I wanna stress that what you, you submit during screening is not baked, fully baked and not set in stone. There are opportunities later on in the project for you to, to amend, make any amendments. Uh, because at Engine, we understand that these are R&D projects and things do change are, are an uncertainty in what so after you, uh, as I mentioned before, after you submit something for screening and our team passes you through that screening stage, that's when you'll gain access to the full application. So this is where, this is the important part of the application. So you'll submit the fully completed application to us by November 15th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So we're looking for 
responses to 10 application questions, approximately 7,000 characters uh, per question. So that's approximately 1,000 words each. That application will be graded on the responses to these 10 questions. So we want to make sure that, that they're comprehensively uh, 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 responded to according to the, the guidance that's in our application uh, guides on our website. So please look at what they entail. We're asked to support those 10 questions. We also ask for a project plan. So we essentially a Gantt chart. We're asking for a risk register. We're asking for uh, an IP plan. So an intellectual property plan that outlines your expected background IP that everybody will be bringing into the project as well as expected foreground IP that will be created from the project. This is obviously because this is your, the, at the application stage, you're just starting your, your collaboration with your partners. This will be your best guess as to what the IP will look like. Um, we're also asking for one financial workbook from each partner. So uh, uh, the different uh, uh, labor expenses, your capital expenses, or your materials expenses. So kind of outlining the, the, how, how those break down. And last but not least, we're also we're asking for additional attachments, such as the letter of support that I had flagged earlier from a, from a project control of requirement as well. So as you can see, uh, this is where the bulk of the work is. We ask that each of these response that quite the responses to the 10 questions and the different documents supporting documents be uh completed from the perspective of all partners involved because this is essentially will be a collaboration so we certainly want the the documents to reflect every participant's viewpoints and 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 what their contribution to the project again as you can see here this is where the bulk of the work will be so we encourage everyone to submit the screening application earlier rather than later Please don't wait until October to submit your, your screening application. Uh, so applicants are not alone in this journey. So please don't feel like you're, you're being left alone in, in kind of figuring out this uh, application process. Uh, the project development team is here to help. So if you let's say you need help finding collaborative partners, are you uh, unsure of your project idea and whether it's in scope or not? And do you have other questions? Feel free to reach out to us, we're happy to help at eb ngenca We're happy to, to, to uh, one of us is happy to help guide you through this journey. We do have other uh, uh, programs uh, across uh, that we're currently, uh, we have launched and are currently will be launching. So for example, we just closed our general advanced manufacturing uh, funding program that's currently entering the contracting stage right now. Uh, as uh, we're talking about today, as our EV manufacturing value chain program. And last but not least, uh, we are expecting to launch an, uh, a program that's related to industrial decarbonization and circular manufacturing. And I want to stress that this program, program or programs are currently under a consultation. So we don't know what the scope will look like, but please stay tuned. We will. Uh, kind of uh, announce further details as it comes out. So that's really exciting. As you can see, a lot of the 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 the, the topics that we touch upon here in Engine are, are are very much obviously related to advanced manufacturing, but looking at at the at uh, at climate change and working towards a low carbon economy. Um, separate from project funding. Engine also has a workforce development arm of our organization. So, namely, our future ready initiatives. So helping our, our Canadian manufacturing footprint modernize and upskill the workforce, as I talked about earlier. And it's made up of two programs. The future ready is made up of the, what we call our transformation leadership program or TLP. So this is a 12 week program that will help uh, provide SME manufacturer leadership teams with the tools to self assess their business and find areas that can be matured and that can be scaled up to become globally competitive. We'll also help them develop a roadmap to correct any areas that may hamper their success and in the process strategically align their, their business to the needs of their customers. And obviously this program is grounded upon helping companies undergo a, a digital transformation toward industry 4.0. And the, uh, the participating organization will only pay uh, $1,500 Canadian dollars for participating in the TLP. 
And uh, we want to stress that such a such a program in in the in the market would normally cost approximately uh, seven thousand five hundred dollars. So this is definitely a deal for companies participating in, in this program. Based on those gaps and opportunities uh, that were identified in the TLP, companies also have an option to take part in the second program called our AMPA program, where companies can select employees for upskilling based on those gaps and opportunities that were identified in the TLP and work with an NGEN training liaison to undergo assessments and create personalized upskilling plans. And through the AMPA program, companies will get 80% reimbursement on, on, on upscaling for their selected employees, up to a maximum reimbursement of $4,000. So this is also includes skills assessment and upskilling supports worth an additional $3,000. So this is a, a $15,000 package that will cost an organization only $2,500 to take part in for both TLP and AMPA. Uh, funding is available on a first come first serve basis for 300 manufacturers across Canada. So, you know, if you're interested, please register on our website for Future Ready to build on your company's strategic transformation plan and develop the workforce kind of you want to support your company as you continue to grow. So, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to my colleagues. Uh, uh, I, this is not the program that I'm involved in, but please reach out to transform at engine.ca if you have any questions. So I felt like I was just uh, doing an infomercial there. So, <laughs> um, so to kind of close on my end, coming back to EVMP, if you have any questions, again, feel free to, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, please also visit our, our website for the detailed guides, resources, and templates. Uh, I want to send a big thank you again to the team at Invest Windsor Essex for putting together this webinar. You know, there's a lot of exciting investments and activity happening in the region's vibrant automotive uh, manufacturing and innovation ecosystem. So we highly recommend and encourage everybody to leverage the many government resources such as NGEN's EVMP program to help set up shop and help grow the emerging electric vehicle value chain right here in the Windsor Essex region. So thank you very much. Back to you, uh, Wendy. Thanks very much, Arthur. We do have some questions um, and, and yes, please everyone feel free to add some more questions into the, the Q&A box. Um, and some of these were a little earlier on in the presentation. So I think you did sort of touch on a bit of the answer in some cases. Um, so the first question is from um, is from a, uh, a um, an entrepreneur, a new entrepreneur. Um, and the question is, uh, if, if they're looking to network, um, you know, where can they find companies to collaborate with if they're sort of new to this space? And, and is there somebody to contact for that? Yeah, so that, that's a very good question. Uh, again, I think I, I had my email address up there. So feel free to reach out at ev-challenge at ngen.ca. Uh, something that we're currently kind of in, in development on is a, is a, uh, a virtual matchmaking platform. So. Uh, we will send out the updated link for that platform where essentially it'll be like a marketplace for project ideas. Uh, we'll be sure to share that with the, uh, with the investments or uh, uh, webinar registration list just to give everyone um, yeah, um, where you can yeah. post a project idea. That would be great. Uh, and we'll be happy to share that. Uh, next question is, uh, can, potential, uh, can potential applicants discuss an application with Engine before submitting just to ensure that they align with the eligibility criteria? Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I, we, in fact, like highly encourage that. So feel free to reach out to myself and, and, and our team here at Engine at ev challenge at engine.ca. We're, we're more than happy to, to work with you. You're, we certainly uh, uh, take pride in the fact that we don't let companies think that they're alone on this journey. We're here to help and support and help you uh, all the way from the ideation stage to finding partners and through to uh, uh, developing an application. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, another question is, uh, how are um, SR and ED tax credits affected by the funding? Um, yeah. And also, as a, as a follow-up, is uh, the NGEN admin fee due when uh, application is submitted? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a very good question. So SR and ED uh, is like a separate uh, uh, kind of funding. It's not considered like a, the non-diluted funding that you, uh, you may receive from us or let's say other organizations like SDTC, so it doesn't impact the stacking. So SR and ED tax credits are separate. Um, and in terms of the admin fee, that's you don't have to worry about that uh, at the application stage. 
if you are recommended for funding uh, uh, and you enter the contracting stage, we we, are, we ask for the admin fee to be paid then. So uh, when that's done. Um, okay, let's see. Is the let's see, um, is the TLP with other companies or personalized to that SME? So a different program than this, but um, I'm, I believe it's personalized to that to that company. Okay, sorry. Can you repeat that, that question? The, yeah, the TLP. So the yeah. Uh, the yeah, is is that personalized to that particular company? Absolutely. So uh, uh, it's it's not the, the program that I'm involved in, but I know that they, they are specifically tailored to the, the participating companies that that join the program. Um, if you, if, and my my colleagues on 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 that team will be more than happy to speak with you at transformatengine.ca. So feel free to reach out to them. They'd be delighted to to have you take part in. Right. Great. Um, and then the, the last question I can answer this one actually will the presentation be shared so so yes it will we um, uh, we have a copy of, of Arthur's presentation along with a recording of this session so we'll share those with everybody who has registered um, I know some people signed on a little bit later had to leave a little bit earlier perhaps registered and then we're not we're not able to attend in the end so happy to share that um, I think. That might be all the questions. Are there any other questions out there that we can address before wrapping up? I think that might be it. Okay, yeah, that does. Feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. We're, our team is always uh, ready and eager to help. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so that does look like all the questions we have. So, so thank you very much again, Arthur, for the informative presentation. Certainly appreciate yeah. your time. Um, and explaining the program. I hope everyone has a better idea now of how to use the program to support their uh, EV technology development efforts. Um, and again, we will provide all the registrants with the recording of the session. Please feel free to reach out to Arthur, to me, anyone on the IWE team with any questions you may have. Contact information will be in that email we send out as well. Uh, if you are a Windsor Essex company, the business retention and expansion team is happy to support you and we're happy to connect with you at any time if you're from outside the area considering and are considering Windsor Essex as a possible expansion location please read out reach out to our investment attraction team um, and they would be very happy to help you with that as well um, so thank you very much oh do we have oh I'm sorry we do have uh, one more question so yes yeah, so there's a, a question from an early stage startup working on the next gen EV charging ecosystem, but they're thinking that, that, that this fund would not uh, apply to them. And is there anything else that would apply? Ah, so that's a very good question. So uh, as I mentioned earlier in the slide, EV, the manufacturing of EV charging is not in scope, but I, I often uh, uh, EV charging companies uh, kind of collaborate a lot on the developments of, of battery technology on vehicle battery uh, technologies and or related systems and components, right? So if the, if if kind of uh, from that perspective, if there's some involvement uh, uh, on that end, we we welcome the battery charge to take part, right? So as long as as the the the, the capability for is uh, related to them the production of on vehicle technology, we're happy for that. But unfortunately EV charging itself is not right, right. Okay, great. No, that's that's perfect. Um, and I think now we really don't have any more questions. So <laughs> thanks again, everyone. Appreciate you taking the time today to, to join us and learn more about this program. And um, thanks very much, Arthur, for all of the information. And have thank a great rest of your day, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.